Overlanding in the heat can be, well, deadly if you're not prepared. Stay tuned for my top 10 on how to resolve that issue. Okay, so let's get into the top 10 right away. Here we go. Number one, stay hydrated. Drink lots of water throughout the day. It goes without saying, of course, we should be doing that anyway, regardless of whether we're overlanding or not. But in this case, yes, making sure we drink enough water throughout the day. Basic rule is that you want to be drinking about every 15 to 20 minutes and you want to be drinking about eight ounces of water per 20 minutes for intense activity. Now, one other thing to mention is that when you're overlanding, you're probably driving around in an air conditioned car. This is actually a good time to kind of top your body up with water, creating a reservoir almost of water inside your body. Because when you get out and you start putting up your tent and building camp and that sort of thing, that's when you're actually going to really start sweating a lot. So having that water in your body ready to go to help cool your body is a big, big bonus. So don't forget to drink while you are driving. Number two, here we go. Wearing light breathable clothing. Light breathable clothing is really, really great. It's, it's not going to stick on you as much when you are sweating. It's going to allow evaporation from your skin, which is uh, extremely important because it won't make you feel as clammy and as sticky because that sweat has some place to go. Number three, take frequent breaks. Now, we want to get our camp all set up and we want to get it ready to go and we want to do this and this, right? Maybe overlanders are a little bit more goal-oriented in some way because when we get to the camp, we just, you know, we don't just put the chair up and put our feet up. We've got things to do, right? So if it is really, really hot in the region that you're in, take, take breaks, you know, do 10 or 15 minutes of strenuous work, sit down, drink, relax, get up, do some more, right? That way you're not putting all of your energy into a very short period of time. You want to kind of spread that out over a little bit to not overexert yourself, especially when it is very, very warm. Number four, sun protection, sun protection. Obviously when you're outside, we do want to minimize the risks of sunburn. So you want to be using probably at least a minimum of an SPF 30 when you're out there. Some people I know go as high as SPF 50 because they know that they have sensitive skin. Be aware of that sort of thing. Also read the instructions on the back of the bottle to inform you as to how often you need to reapply. Because if you put it on once and you expect it to work for the whole day, it's not going to do that. Um, the other thing that you can do at the very outset, so maybe 20, 30 minutes before you actually get outside, pull off and apply the sunscreen to your body before you actually get out and do any kind of strenuous or any kind of outside activity where you're going to be uh, involved with the sun there. The reason it is allows the, the sun protection cream to actually kind of sink into your skin a little bit and to create that extra little bit of uh, barrier in your dermis. Number five, uh, monitor your physical condition. So there are telltale signs that you should be aware of that heat exhaustion is starting to creep up. Things like excessive sweating. When it becomes profuse, that is a sign. Weakness, dizziness, headache, nausea, mus uh, muscle cramping, uh, especially in the stomach, that's all of those are telltale signs that you better back off about whatever you're doing and start to uh, rehydrate yourself because you're getting into a situation where over time that is going to create a problem with you. One, one thing that you want to consider if you do actually start seeing those signs, 
Don't drink a lot of water at the same time. Don't just gulp a whole bunch of water down and expect that to be okay. There's a reason for that because as you drink a lot of water at one time, you're also going to urinate that water out um, in a very short period of time. The water is not going to stay in your body. It's going to go in and out. What you want to do, if you do find yourself maybe starting to get a little dizzy, sit down, sip water. You know, maybe a sip every, every few minutes. That will allow the water to be stored in your body for a longer period of time before you have to urinate it out. That is a good thing. The other thing, of course, is that if you are profusely sweating, your body needs the water in order to regulate the heat. So if you throw a bunch of water back at one time and expect that to regulate, it's not going to work. Number six, acclimatize to the heat. Now, this could be something where you know you are going to be arriving at your destination for the evening and you've got 45 minutes to go. Well, turn the aircon off in the car and just allow the, the, the heat to kind of build up in the car. Maybe roll the windows down. It gives you a, your body a chance to actually begin to understand, oh yes, we're going to change temperatures now and it's going to get hot and I'm going to be sweaty in the car and that's okay because you're going to be sweaty out there too. Number seven, plan your activities wisely. Now, we all know that the, the most intense heat, the most intense sun is going to be uh, generally between about 10 to 2 or 3 in the afternoon, okay? That, that five hour window. So that might be the window where you spend most of your time driving rather than actually putting your, your camp up. If you are staying at a location for a couple of days, uh, plan light activities during that pe period of time. Make sure you've got your awning out and you've got shade, drinking water, sitting around, talking with your friends. So plan your activities accordingly to the, to the heat of the day. Strenuous activities in the early morning and as the sun is going down, I think is a much safer solution for you. Number eight, cooling devices. Now, I'll be honest, I don't really have any cooling devices for when I, for me personally when I go out, but there are a few things that are in the market now that I can definitely see the advantage of, of having. So one of those things is battery operated fan where you can just plug into a USB, you can charge it, it's, you know, it's, it's a lithium ion battery or something, and you can set up a fan around you just in order to create some airflow. Now, the reason why that can be good is if you are sweating and there's not much of a breeze, that airflow can help evaporate the sweat on your skin, providing a little bit of a cooling sensation. The other thing that you can do is if you happen to have an electric fridge in the back of your vehicle, you can put a kind of damp towel in your freezer if you have one of those sections and you can actually kind of cool off the towel, put it in there for about 20 minutes and then wrap it around your neck and that will provide a nice little cooling sensation for yourself. Misting bottles is another thing that you can do. Put a little bottle inside your refrigerator, keep the water cool, spritz yourself down, put it back in the refrigerator. Don't forget to put it back in the refrigerator because then the water's gonna get warm and it's not gonna be as effective. Number nine, um, avoid heavy meals. When it is really hot, if you have a heavy meal, what that is going to do is that it's going to increase the energy required in your body to actually digest the food that you've eaten. So if you've had something like meats or pastas, for example, the problem is when it's really hot, your body is going to produce even more heat inside because it's trying to use the body's energy to, uh, to get that food through your system. So lighter foods when it's hot, definitely a really great idea. Number 10, overland with a buddy. Now, of course, we're probably gonna be doing this anyway, but it bears to make sense. Traveling with a partner 
who is aware of this sort of issue as you would be too because you're watching my video. People will be able to see certain things. It's like, hey, you might be starting uh, heat exhaustion because of blah, 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 blah. So uh, why don't you have a seat? Sometimes we don't recognize the symptoms in ourselves. We think, ah, oh, we're okay. Don't worry about it. It's just blah, blah, blah. But if somebody else is watching you and seeing maybe you maybe you're getting a little bit more tempered because uh, you're you're being affected somebody else can say hey I, I think you're you've got the telltale signs of heat exhaustion here's a glass of water uh, have a seat right take it easy uh, drink some water right so having that second person or third person or fifth person whatever can help with monitoring your situation and monitoring the team that you're with. That is my top 10 for heat exhaustion. Stay cool, everybody, and hang out for the next video.